is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Thursday, Thursday, August 15th. It's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri and I'll be host for the day. Of course, Aaron Green is with me and on our guest uh, interrogator, our guest who is helping us explain um, the issue with the Port Authority and defining is C. Allen Johnson. We're continuing a conversation that we, we had on the on the clock with Aaron Green. And um, we want to read some things into the record. But before I do, I'm going to make sure that uh, C. Allen is still connected. Could C. Allen, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. So we'll read some things into, into the record. And then we, we're not going on a, a pivot into a different direction. But we just want to add to the conversation as we interrogate what is the issues happening in Grand Bahama regarding the Port Authority. We, we're discussing the mandate of the Port Authority, the mandate of the government. Um, we also want to, in this framework, uh, have a discussion on where the Bahamian people, because the, the Port Authority, the, the, the free port was established for the benefit of Bahamians. And we're trying to see where should Bahamians be in regarding this narrative. I know it's very early. I know it's very, very early yeah. in this half of the. But how are you certain that it was established for the benefit of the Bahamian people? I assume any entity in the in uh, being created has the benefit of Bahamians. Should. Should. But okay, um, I want to have uh, Aaron read this into record because the opposition leader has opinions, and I'm saying wait. On whose side this opposition leader is, so um, we're going to read that uh, as uh, as uh, as the the marker, and then we'll carry on from there. Let me just say, when you say opposition leader, right? Like one of these articles makes the point to, and it's the same article. Uh, government may take GBPC rate issue to court to indicate that F Fred Mitchell is chairman of the party, minister of foreign affairs, and MP for Fox Hill. Let's also remember that Pintard is a resident of Grand Bahama, mm. an MP in Grand Bahama and the leader of the opposition. Go ahead. Right? Okay. So we go that, let me just say that, let me just say the, in fact, the, the, the constituency of uh, Marco City, I think is one of, maybe one of the largest areas in Freeport. East Grand Bahama, Central Grand Bahama, and West Grand Bahama represent, uh, East and Central represent just pieces of Freeport and they are, Okay. Other parts of their constituencies outside of Freeport. That's but just backwards, right? That, but, I just want to stick a pin there in terms of boundaries, uh, constituency boundaries, and the implications that arise from that at a later date, maybe even at a later show. C. Allen, I, I just wanted to stick a pin because uh, that's extremely interesting as well. How the constituencies are laid out, right. and that's how and there was one time six of them. Yeah, it's now right. five. So let's go. Pinta GBPA is electricity regulator. While stressing that the opposition is against the proposed rate increase for electricity on Grand Bahama, opposition leader Michael Pintard yesterday disagreed with the government's assertion that the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority is the regulator for the island's energy sector. Pintard said the Free National Movement supports the Hawksbill Creek Agreement, which sets out the scope of the Grand Bahama Port Authority's powers in Flint, if it is minded to change the Hawksbill Creek Agreement, knows the process by which it ought to go through. And we would be more than happy to sit with the government and look at potential changes that are necessary for the Hawksbill Creek Agreement. Close quotes, he said. Quote, but the way the administration is approaching it, we are on record as saying that the approach that they are taking is a bad approach in terms of the public row. The threats and the back and forth by both of them, close quotes. He was contacted by the Nassau Guardian to comment on the latest row between the Davis administration and the GBPA. The row was ignited last week after an announcement from the Grand Bahama Power Company that it had submitted an application to GBPA for a 6.3% increase in the base rate for electricity. The government said the application should have been submitted to IRCA, 
the sole regulator for electricity in the country, adding that it does not support an increase in electricity rates in Grand Bahama at this time. The Davis administration cited the Electricity Act 2024, which established IRCA as the independent overseer for the generation, transmission, distribution, and supply of electricity for the entire country. The new electricity law was passed by Parliament in May without the support of FNMMPs. The GBPA operates Freeport under special powers conferred by the Hawks Bill Creek Agreement, which was signed in 1955 to establish Freeport as a free trade zone on Grand Bahama to foster economic. <coughs> you want to stick a pin there? Yeah, stick a, pin, a stick a pin right there, unless um, <coughs> the article goes in more detail. But let me um, ask C. Allen this. The article uh, mentions the process to change the Hawks Bill Creek Agreement. Um, are you aware of the process and can you educate us on what is the process if you do know what is the process yes. to change, the change right the, the Hawks change Creek any tenants of the hawks and kick agreement require the consent of three parties the government the grand bahama port authority and the licensees and the licensees quorum must be 80 percent now one of the things that still perplexes me is that certain things agreements that has been made, for instance, I knew that 1966 was the last amendment, but yet we have a 1968 agreement where supposedly the Port Authority agreed to be subject to the minister for any utility that came afterwards. So, but here's the point you have to understand. In any agreement that involves two or more individuals, some one of those individuals cannot arbitrarily change the agreement. It must be done by vote. And so if this agreement, whatever agreement they gave the Grand Bahama Port Authority, the ability to be the regulator cannot just by law, I, I know it seems as if it, it does, and that's where the legal question comes in. You just can't simply say, you and I have an agreement. I have the ability to change the law, so I'm going to go change the law to invalidate this agreement. And that's where the court, I'm sure, would, 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 would disagree with that uh, thing because then it would then make government itself a dictator uh, 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 to be able to set change, not just for Freeport, but for anywhere in the Bahamas that you have an agreement. So let's use an example of the Atlantis head of agreement. The government has an agreement with them, two people, Bahama, whatever. That means the government could go into court, change the law, and says that agreement is no longer valid. And there's a, there's a process to, to arbitrate these type of environment. And I would say that that has not happened in Freeport. So you would have to you would have to lean towards the support of the position that the opposition has taken is that without these proper steps being taken, we would have to assume that the Grand Bahama Port Authority is still the regulator until a clarification comes from the court. And so that's where the government itself says it will seek clarification from the court also in regards to it. If the government was absolute in its position, why would you need to seek clarification? Okay, I'm going to go back to the chairman of the Progressive Little Party, which, which he says that the government is minded to sue. Do <clears throat> uh, you have the article still? The uh, government may take GBPC rate issue to court, or you want me to continue... From this point in the article that says the government has also demanded the GBPA pay three hundred and fifty seven million it says it is owed. Yeah, they okay, before them. before you get that, before you get that, let me just go back to the man understand this. The the, the uh, any any licensee or anyone in Freeport can also sue for clarification without having to wait for government or for the port authority to answer. And there is a number of us licensees how are having that discussion as to whether or not we may have to seek clarification on this ourselves, because we don't need any ambiguity in who does what in Freeport. Because it's very important for us to know as licensees and as residents, who is the ultimate authority, because I don't want to stand in front of the GPPC screaming at them when I should be in New Providence screaming at Urquhart, because Urquhart doesn't have an officer yet. Okay, so let's read this in and then we can have you respond after that. Go ahead again, Eric. Government may take GBPC rate issue to court, 14th of August, 2024, Nassau Guardian. Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell said yesterday the government is 
prepared to take legal action over the Grand Bahama Power Company's decision to rates, increased rates without approval from the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority. Quote, it would seem to me the next course of action is to injunct them from carrying it out. Close quotes, Mitchell told reporters. He made the comments when asked about an ongoing disagreement between the government and the GBPA over which entity is the regulator for the Grand Bahama Power Company. I'm going to be read from that before. The government, however, has maintained IRCA is the only regulator citing the Electricity Act 2024, which established it as the independent regulator for the generation, transmission, distribution, and supply of electricity for the entire country. Parliament passed the Electricity Bill 2024 Act in May, but the GBPA said the Electricity Act, quote, attempts to give IRCA the legal right to license and oversee energy providers, close quote, and, quote, is inconsistent with and conflicts with the rights and privileges vested in GBPC and GBPA by the Hawksbill Creek Agreement, close quote. Quote, an action was commenced in the Supreme Court to challenge IRCA's ability to license and regulate on the basis that these conflict with the provisions of the Hospital Creek Agreement as Freeport's founding treaty. The GBPA said, we will continue to defend our positions as it is important to point out that there have been over a dozen successfully litigated cases that have set a judicial precedent for the GBPA's exclusive regulatory authority in Freeport, close quotes. Mitchell said yesterday, however, <clears throat> that the law is clear on the matter. Quote, the Constitution, the good order and peace of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, he said, there is not, there is not a sub-sovereign power. There is not a competing sovereign power. That issue was settled long ago in 1969 when the Grand Bahama Port Authority had supernumerary police powers and they also had immigration powers. We went to the British, and the British repatriated those powers to the government of the Bahamas. So that issue is settled. There's only one sovereign power. That power resides in Nassau and in the parliament in Nassau, not in Freeport, in the Grand Bahama Port Authority. It has been passed. It is clear that IRCA has the jurisdiction. The GBPA has licensing authority, meaning to give you a business license to operate in Freeport, but they, they do not have the power to regulate power supply and the cost of power supply because that vests in IRCA, close quotes. And, and this is where I want to interrogate what is IRCA's responsibility, right? And, uh, and see, Alan, if you can, if you're willing, uh, you can give a, right. a narrative of what is IRCA responsibility. Just let me oh, one, 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 minute, one, minute, one minute for me, one minute for me. A narrative okay. of what IRCA is. And my concern is, who should be seeking an injunction? Should it be the government of the Bahamas or should it be IRCA? Is IRCA independent to, to operate as an entity as, unto itself? And say, well, you do you do not have the authority, therefore I'm seeking an injunction, or does it have to go to the government who's saying that IRCA does not have the authority to work by itself, therefore I am the government seeking an injunction on Grand Bahama Port Authority. Right. Or or right. Sh or should the That's hold on, see Alan, or should the GBPA take the Electricity Act twenty twenty four before the courts for judicial review to say that it is uh Virus, the Constitution, but it's ultra virus existing ordinary legislation. Entity, and Oka can sue to exercise its authority. That's why the government said it was it was urgent Oka in the beginning. Even though see, Alan, so, so you muffled to Alan. So you have to stop and then we'll start over. Hold on. See if you can okay, speak it in clear. All right. So in, in the meantime, see, so this is my concern. Yes, much, better. much better. Go ahead. Okay. Let's say that example, the Port Authority could sue that their, their powers is being stripped of them without consent. OCA can stand alone and says this power belongs to us. And government itself could do exactly what they say, seek an injunction or clarification as to which of these two has that ability. Those are different actions. And then a licensee or residence of Freeport or any, I guess, any bohemian could also sue for an injunction for clarification. So all of these are variables, I think, that is capable of going into, uh, in, in, uh, in, into, the, into the court. 
And this is where the clarification is that we're not, very few people could tell you, explain to us how this operated before, right? And then tell us under which context and things that this operated and tell this law passed and tell me, now explain to me how this law modified this. So we just have people saying things, but the public itself is not being informed. What existed before? What supposedly the conflict is? I mean, this is happening with the with the claim for the uh, for the money that is owed and and everything else. And this is where again the government as a trustee for the Bohemian people, as well. And I would say for the licensees, that would be the licensees' fault that we have not come together as a collective to exercise our rights that's given to us under the Hawksbill Creek Agreement. And so essentially you could consider that though Freeport has function, it is functioning in a, it is, it is, it is a dysfunctional place in respect to whose responsibility which is. And that's what we saw where you have the argument concerning the development of Freeport. The, the Port Authority claims that, that uh, the, the government has a foot on their neck. The government claims that they have, the Port Authority has a foot on their neck. They have a plan. But the, people, the residents of, of Freeport and Grand Bahamas are saying they both have foots on our necks. And so we don't know what is the strategy for what's now, what's new, and what's next. And that is the thing. And I think all behemoths have to be concerned because if you look at overall for the entire Bahamas, now understand that the Freeport area Grand Bahama is 530 square miles. The Freeport area is larger than 230 square miles of that. So in essence, here you have a 530 square miles area and Freeport is 230 square miles. So in Freeport may even be larger contingent properties that extended beyond that. And even though they could have control of properties, that is not directly then identified as Freeport, they would still have control of properties that oh. extend outside. See, Alan, so pin. So I'm inferring from what you just said that despite the geographic boundaries of the free trade zone called Freeport being established in the 1955 Act, right, that right. The, the GBPA has the authority or the capacity to extend its geographical boundary without consideration of the state? Like they could just, yes. they could just do that. Yeah, they can buy property, which they have, and the Grand Bahama Port Authority owns properties east and west of, uh, of, of Freeport. And Do they still own uh, property in Andrus? They, 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 I, don't, I don't know. They may. But what I'm saying to you, what happens, unless those areas touch each other, those areas don't get the benefits of the, the uh, agreement. Licenses. Okay. Yeah. Okay, my next question so, is, um, in the article that Aaron read, uh, in 1969, um, the that's time... That's what I wanted to touch off, right, yeah. The, the government went and got... You, know, you notice what the government did. The government got... We weren't independent yet, so the government went and got consent that they wanted to claw back the certain aspect of the... Uh, so I could, they, meaning they had their own police department, they had their own customs, and everything else here in Freeport. And the government went and clawed those back by virtue, again, it was virtue of agreement. I'm sure they sat down with the Port Authority and uh, they they sat down with the government. I, I don't know where it was. Hello, are you there? You cut out. Okay. In the meantime, until we get uh, C. Allen back uh, and connected. Let me read the quote, the 1969 yes, quote from the article again. We are reading from the article in yesterday's Guardian, government may take GBPC rate issue to court. We're reading the words of Mr. Fred Mitchell. And he says, that issue was settled long ago in 1969 when the Grand Bahama Port Authority had supernumerary po police powers and they also had immigration powers. We went to the British, and the British repatriated those powers to the government of the Bahamas. And that's what C. Allen Johnson meant when he said that we clawed back those aspects of the Hawk Hawksbill Creek Agreement. But because we were not independent yet, we had to go to the cr essentially the Crown and request or get their consent to do that. So, And what I wanted to ask him, and hopefully we get connected back to him shortly, or he's, he's be able to hear us so he can answer when he comes back on, is yes. the, okay, I'm back to the question now. The responsibility of the hospital, the responsibility of securing uh, 
the building and maintenance of the police force by the Port Authority. Um, who owns the Rand Memorial Hospital? Is so that a government? Memorial. One minute for me. Is that a government hospital, or does the Port Authority has a mandate to maintain the hospital and maintain the police station, fire station, with all those there that for and grab a hammer or, or what's inside that port, uh, that port area? Okay, I, I would tell you that first of all, let me just say we've been referring to this place called, and I and I I, I guess because we. Uh, we've added some room to a clinic that, that, that was there from since uh, the doctors that built it from the early 50s or 60s. We don't have a hospital on Grand Bahama, nor is any hospitals being built on Grand Bahama in spite of what is being announced. So let's have clarification on that. Hospitals have That's you and your semantics. But who else has a hospital? Oh, hold on. See, see, Alan, before we transition from that point, there's a text here that says, we in Grand Bahama know that the government-owned public health authority Bahamas is holding full-called Bahamas. I, I, no, this is just what the text okay. saying, uh, et cetera, who are all licensees of the GBPA. Uh, the Bahamian people are being bamboozled and taken advantage of. We are watching and listening every day. So what the text is saying is the government has shares in these entities and their licensees in the GBPA. Is that true? That is it repeated that they are licensed. Okay, they said that yeah, the, the government must be a licensee because they no. own these authority, these entities that are licensees. It, but again, uh, the, the I, I don't know if the government itself have licenses, but one of the things is that I got clarification of this years ago. One can operate a business in Freeport without having a license from the Grand Bahama Port Authority as long as you don't partake of the benefits, benefits of, the, of, the, of it. And so, but that process itself is very complicated and I guess we have to ask for clarification even more so because it's, it's, it's where you want to, you know, you, the government has complete, because you can't have a license in free without the government license. And so the question then is that, are you mandated to have a free port license? Um, about almost eight, nine, ten years ago, I got a clarification from the attorney general and from the port authority. So uh, the, that, that clarification is can, that you can you can operate a business in the free port without being licensed by the GBPA, but you cannot benefit from anything that the GBPA the offers. Reserves. Okay. Yes, from from the Hawksbury Creek from the Hawksbury Creek Agreement. Now, going back to the hospital, right? Yes, because I, 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 I remember for, for Taylor, I know the government was uh, suggesting that the Port Authority is not uh, fulfilling their, their mandate regarding the hospital and regarding the, the police um, offices and stuff like that. And I want to know who owns the hospital? Um, what the, what uh, impact the, that the Port Authority has regarding these, these, these entities? We, we own it. Now, I don't know if they, if they exist on, on... So it's a government hospital? Title. Yes, government hospital. I don't know if they own, and it's run by government. I don't know if those are free, it's what they call free title, uh, free simple titles, or whether they are leased land or not that those facilities are on. But the Hawksbury Creek Agreement had, had required that they, uh, they, they, they operate and maintain such medical services and facilities in accordance with standard good medical and hospital practice. They're supposed to provide medical. Uh, services and facilities consisting not less than one qualified medical practitioner, one qualified nurse or dispensary extra equipment, hospital facilities of not less than four beds of all the standard equal to that provided at the date uh, of this agreement by the government. So it's supposed to, I guess, grow accordingly. But understand that there's been very agreements, and one of those happened during the 90s when, at the time when, when this move to the concession, this is how we got this fake local government. Uh, uh, because in 1990, we should have evolved into becoming a municipal government by the licenses and everything else in the Port Authority. Uh, the ownership of that should have devolved out of that. We've never had it. So what we did was we somehow agreed for them to build uh, a, a courthouse, uh, two schools, uh, the police station, and a number of things for the so-called delayed implementation of the of, of these agreements. These are things that I guess education will have to bring that into the, into clarity. And I think the hospital may have been part of that agreement to give these uh, extension of these concessions. 
beyond the uh, the period that was that was uh, allowed. And so uh, the biggest problem we have, like again, is that uh, we have no real education concerning the Hawksby Creek Agreement. We have the Port Authority that will give you one story, the government will give you another, and everybody else will just make up the make up the story without. And so, the, but, but just I just wanted you to say that, you know, without the Port Authority, without government, we do not have a hospital in Grand Bahama. We have a place that, with a name of a hospital, but that doesn't meet the definition of a hospital. And we have a place that's being built the definition of a clinic, not a hospital. And so it's the same way that you guys are getting this new clinic that, ha- that is being called a hospital. The hospital has a definition, uh, uh, and we should meet those and stop allowing individuals to tell us what the things are. You know, let's call things for in their name. And because other than that, we will not get what we actually need. Because they'll just give you something to give you sugar apple and tell you it's a, uh, uh, another type of apple. Let so, me ask you another oh, question. Please. The Minister of Grand Bahama and how it relates the, to the. Did I use the word correctly? Minister for Grand Bahama. <laughs> not off. <laughs> the Minister for Grand Bahama. And how it relates to the Freeport area and her jurisdiction, uh, her responsibilities, her able, her ability to um, demand of the Port Authority. What type of authority does the Minister of Grand Bahama have? Regarding? The same. She has the same authority as uh, a parliamentary secretary with the name, with the name of minister. My because gosh. if you if you go to the Gazette uh, to the Gazette document. Uh, you would end up with uh, 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 her position is liaison with, not you know kind of ministerial uh, uh, position. You'll have liaison with the port authority, liaison with the airport, liaison uh, with uh, 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 the hotel, as opposed to uh, an actual ministerial post. It doesn't give any particular mandate of exactly. Uh, uh, her position. Like, I can actually tell you, it's that coordination liaison with ministries, relations with the Grand Bahama Port Authority, revitalization, revitalization promotion of Grand Bahama as a tourism and industrial center, promotion of agriculture development Grand Bahama. Slow, Bahama down, Bahama slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Promotion of agricultural development in Grand Bahama, advancement of health and employment and entrepreneurial opportunities on Grand Bahama, development of the Grand Bahama International Airport, Community relocation and restoration in East and West Grand Bahama, relations with urban renewal Grand Bahama, relations with disaster and risk management and construction authority of Grand Bahama of our Grand Bahama, relations with Grand Bahama with Grand Lokayan Resorts Operations, community engagement and empowerment Grand Bahama, and that's it. I, I, uh, sorry, Aaron. I want you to give a definition and and the mandate of this McKinsey report. You mentioned it earlier, but I am. Um, Tell me, tell us again, what is the McKinsey report and um, what does that give that the responsibility of the Port Authority and then the responsibility of the government? What, what the McKinsey report did was it gave the government a, a, a local and international perspective of the impact of the Hawksburg Creek Agreement and the benefits and uh, uh, the, the pros and cons of maintaining it or doing away with it. And it is an extensive report. We paid a few million dollars for it. And so I would only assume that it was done by the McKinsey Group. That's why it's called the McKinsey Report. And it would tell you what is good for it, what is bad. In fact, the attorney for the Grand Bahama Port Authority, I don't know if he's working as acting as the attorney for the Grand Bahama Port Authority, but Mr. Uh, uh, Fred Smith sued in the, in the court system to get a copy of the report. And the court ruled that he should have a copy, even though I don't know if he got a copy or not. But that has not been made available to the Bahamian people. And one has to question why. More so that you would assume that at the time the Perry Christie administration was seeking to get approval for their desire to uh, continue with the uh, exemptions that was provided, that he would provide the evidence to support his position. One has to question why it was hidden and why it hidden. But that report is gives you the full... I guess that would be as close to an extensive report that has been happening since the Royal Commission report of 1971. And so it would tell us the state of Grand Bahama and the economics. I would also assume, and, and this is where the complexity of uh, things that has happened on Grand Bahama, <clears throat> like for instance, we have VAT on Grand Bahama in the purest sense. That's a, in my 
understanding that would be an illegal act in spite of what they say it is. And there's a lot of things that we have had this twisted, contaminated, do as you will type of environment, but still calling the thing that is still the Hawksbury Agreement in its purity. And I think for me personally, and I'm sure a lot of licensees and even behemoths that they understood would agree, is that we do need a another commission on the Hawksbury Creek Agreement and its relevance in the 21st century. And let me say this now. I still today think the part the, the Hawksbury Creek Agreement, when you look at through the eyes of the 21st century, and I would challenge anyone, and I guess we'll have another show on this, I could show you where Freeport could add $2 billion a year GDP to the behemoth economy in the in the hospitality, tourism, and orange economy alone. That's without going to, you know, the other type of tourism that we may have, like sports. Okay, okay. But let me <clears throat> ask you this. So the point I said, let me see. The point I said that for is this: that's how important that we've had stagnant growth for the last 25, 30 years in the Bahamas has not met our growth potential. Yeah, we understand that. At the same time, we look, we're ignoring what Grand right. Bahamas So, is. see, Alan, uh, what, the question that leads from that for me is, is the agreement itself the problem? No. Is this agreement, I put to you that there's no modification of this agreement is needed. The Maybe some things like sweetness and some things you add and take away you know, in the same way we have given the delayed implementation, those things could be done. Because understand, you cannot modify the Hawksville Creek Agreement in its purest sense without striking it down. It's a law. You don't change law. You, 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 when you modify a law, you repeal it and come with another one. So even when we talk about the licensees modifying the agreement, it isn't the law itself. It's the tenets of these agreements that can be agreed upon to change directions or, or, or add to or take away from it as long as it doesn't modify the law itself that gives the power and authority. Okay, I can let you read. Okay, um, I want to ask about the term arbitration, even though we know, but it's for the listening listen audience, right? The Prime Minister mentioned the word arbitration and that they, they the government, and the Port Authority is going through arbitration. We, we're not sure what happened after that. Now we're hearing this Sue term by the by the chairman of the Progressive Two Liberal Party. Things. Two different things. So I'm, I'm going to say the arbitration. Go ahead. The arbitration is concerning the Hawksville Creek Agreement. It says that whenever they disagree, they would seek arbitration. They would go and find a mediator uh, consisting of three people. I guess the part chooses one, uh, the government chooses one, and they both agree to another one. And so that's where they are in regards to what they are claiming that is owed. Let me just quickly tell people what has happened. It said that in the in the development of Grand Bar of Freeport, I, I, you can remember this is Freeport for the hospital for the for the authority that they're supposed to promote. They're supposed to do certain things to allow the government to generate sufficient tax revenue to cover the expenses for providing these things. These would come back in the 1969 agreement. So by the government providing customs and immigration, including the, the including the expenses for housing and everything for those particular officers, even though they've never gotten it, they're supposed to be covered. And the government's supposed to do a comparative analysis concerning the revenue generated from these these these, these uh, income taxes should equal to or exceed every year what the, the government is expending. And so essentially the government is claiming that they're expending $75 million a year deficit in Freeport. And if you, if you look at it, what they put in that $357 million and the $75 million that they have in this year, next year, and the year after, as anticipated revenue coming from the lack of development in Freeport from the Grand Bahama Port Authority. And so uh, they haven't made claim now for these other years. Remember, this claim ends in 2022, going back six years and so I'm sure that the government, using the time barred statutes, we could simply come back for 2023, 24, and 25, and add it to that 357 million dollars. And I guess they are going to sit down to determine. Uh, and, and let me tell you why it's get tricky. You know, do you know that all the roads in Freeport are private roads except for the Queens Highway? And so the fact that we pay uh, licensing fees 
to drive on the road in Freeport, the government, that is a form of revenue they collect. So it's a whole, this is not a simple process, and I think that's why they owe it to the entire, remember again, this isn't about Freeport. They owe it to the entire Bahamas to explain what is being asked. So if the Port Authority doesn't want to let us know, government is obligated to bring us an explanation as to what are they doing on our behalf. Imagine that you have a trustee who is representing you, and the trustee then tells you that you have nothing to do. That feels. <laughs> if we in Nassau, they Grand Bahama residents. We know how that feels in New Providence okay. and the rest of the but, islands. But, right, and so that's essentially what is happening. So, and this is where we need the accountability, transparency, freedom of information type of environment that we have not gotten yet to promise by multiple administrations going back for 20 years. We're okay. going to take a quick break, Seattle. We're going to take a quick break. We are having a conversation with Grand Bahama Port Authority. We're having a conversation about government and this seemingly public row between the Port Authority. I don't like, uh, first of all, don't like real no, row? I don't like the language that's being used around the discussion. And the question is, is it the media that is sensationalizing what is happening or is this par for the course for uh, agreements at this at this level? You don't think that this oil could be done behind closed doors? Why yes. we keep on running to the media and having no, these it, public it, conversations? It can be. On, it, most of it could. But on that, again, we still have a right to be updated. On that we got, side of the we got to take a break. We got to take a break and relax that same question. And then I'll ask you also, was the Port Authority experiment, the Hawksville Creek Agreement experiment successful? And why didn't we create another free port maybe in an Andrus? Why just one? Anyway, Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. Of course, Aaron Green is with me. We speak to C. Allen Johnson. We talk about Grand Bahama Port Authority. And we shall be right back. Why? Why you look so mashed up like clothes at the washer? No, no, boy. Just a hard day. Boy. Hard day? What happened? The breakfast lady ran out of tuna and Gretzi. We need to start joking with everything, you know. This serious, boy. This real serious, boy. Boy, what's serious? Tell me. All right, well, today, boss gave us, boy, one big, big contract. And nobody else get a chance and nobody say nothing. Boy, you know that ain't right. You know government contracts ain't supposed to go that way. Yeah, but nobody's saying nothing. Boss man just tell people to sign the papers. Then he sent me to meet his boy down town and collect this envelope. You need to tell somebody. You need to become a whistleblower. You know I a real man, but I never blow no whistle. I be drunk all my life and junk No way. Oh, see, when they see something wrong happening at work. But I ain't no whistleblower and I ain't no snitch. I still wait there, you know. But ain't nobody gonna know it's you. All you gotta do is call Crime Stoppers or you could text them from inside the Croc Crime Bahamas app. They don't ask about you. And your call goes straight through to Miami. So nobody knows you is. And if you text, your message get mixed up like Kong Salad. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your Masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that are second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302 2361. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. And welcome back to Guardian Radio AM. We have our last 15 minutes as we still discuss about this exchange and the Port Authority, the Grand Bahama Port Authority. And we're just defining things, putting things in perspective and trying to understand as layman what is uh, and what is happening. And before the break, I was asking C. Allen whether the experiment co- uh, the ho- called the Hawksbill Creek Agreement was it successful and why wasn't there another free port Port created perhaps in the southern Bahamas, which would have uh, helped benefit the Bahamas. You're making assumptions. 
No, because we still haven't determined whether the Hawksbill uh, Creek Agreement is benefiting the Bahamas. There you go. No, but I'm going to tell you, in the initial years, you could, you could literally just take 30 years. It's the Hawksbill Creek Agreement from 1955 to now. So the, the early years, it did benefit Freeport. Then if you look at the true of Freeport, right, it kind of stagnated for a while until a gentleman by the name of Abe Gould came to Freeport and created what we now call downtown Freeport, Casa Bahama, and some other things. And that brought an impetus to Freeport and life came to Freeport. And then we lived of that and, and slowly we had diminishing returns until about the 2000s. And and, and then just for, the, you know, I could, I could argue back into the 90s where we, we basically bought buckets when we got these, uh, like the container port and the shipyard and everything. Those were buckets because you put those industries here and these other industries, but you never develop any further aspects of Freeport. And that's why the dozen plus hotels that was here on Freeport, where, you know, Freeport was a place where they said the magic city, there was always something going on. There was a plane at the airport. You know, you know, some of the largest planes used to be state park at the Freeport airport at the time coming back in, but people were going back and forth where people came in the morning, leave in the evening, come for gambling, come for the clubs and everything. And so we slowly diminished all of those. And, and then the, the, you could almost say, the life of Freeport began to get sucked out from 9-11 and continued with the double hurricanes of 2004 going on. And right around 2004, let's say 2005, after the death of Everett and George, because basically I used to think that he was the caretaker of the ones who were responsible for continuously buying the buckets. And you had nobody else to step in his place. And Freeport itself, the Hawks, the Grand Bahama Port Authority, and this is why, personally, I support the going to the, the concept of municipal governance that the Freeport, uh, Hawksbury Creek Agreement envisioned. But what has been done, if you look at the development of Freeport, no one can take away what was done from the harbor to roads that lasted 50 years now. You know, we are reaching the end of life of our roads and our infrastructure. But when you look at the monies that was invested and what was designed, is that it's simply put that we just never continue to grow or continue to maintain the city of Freeport. And so now you have an island in crisis and a city in neglect. All right. See, Alan. And so the, we got a call I want to go to, right? But as we said, before I go to call, said, yeah, yeah. Freeport needs leadership. Grand Bahama needs leadership that understands the 21st century and this tool called an uh, exclusive economic zone, and I'll answer your question after the call. All right, and and then second to that, should Freeport be its own constituency, or would that be to the detriment of the other residents in Grand Bahama? Put that sticking a pin to that. that. Let's go to the caller. Good morning, caller. Hey, morning. Hey, morning. What's happening? Everything's good. good. Hey, what's happening, Fiala? Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, can you speak to the part of the office of the agreement that this administration? Uh, where uh, Fred Mitchell and uh, Prime Minister were in the cabinet. Can you speak to that portion of the Oxford Creek Agreement that they that they extend? Can you elaborate that on on, on that a bit? Yes, I, I, I can. It, it's essentially not an extension. It's delayed implementation. It's a delayed implementation of certain tax regime that it called that it that it called for. And so it, 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 we had what is called sunset expiration of uh, of uh, the expiration of these exemptions. Some exemptions was for ninety nine years, and some of them was for less than ninety nine years. And essentially, I think it was uh, uh, real property tax, uh, tax on earnings, uh, tax on things produced in Freeport. It's various different things. I, I do have I have a list that separates the two the two things. And these expired. And so essentially, there was no extension given. These expired, and that means that the implementation of these tax regimes should have taken place. What they did is they passed a law suspending the implementation of these regimes so that things continued as, as, it, as they were. Until when? Until, tw until 2015. And then Perry Christie was looking to seek to, exp to, to further extend it but my understanding is that he gave a stopgap measure 
which is what uh, uh, Minis repeal or let expires, which is what Brave Davis is now using to demand these revenues. Can it be a free trade zone without those exemptions? Yes, it can. A free trade zone is basically a customer, 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 customizable type environment. Let's use the fact that in case people forget, in 2007 during the election, Hubert Alexander Ingram brought up the fact that there was an attempt to establish Oban 1.0 in East Grand Bahama, where a city agreement was made by the Progressive Liberal Party that they did not execute because they, it was too close to the election, utilizing the other uh, 200 and maybe 60 acres. The whole given, and he said during the, on the campaign trail, they're trying to give away the whole other 260,000 acres or 260 square miles in the East Grand Bahama. Because understand, West Grand Bahama outside of Freeport only consists of 35 square miles at best, maybe 30 square miles. And the rest, the other 500 square miles is either Freeport or East Grand Bahama. See, Alan, we have another so caller also. Let me see if I could squeeze them in so mm -hmm. uh, we can run through that last 10 minutes. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Oh, thank you so much for squeezing me in. Uh, 15, 20, 24. Make it very clear uh, uh, that, that, that the Gramhammer Port Authority cannot regulate electricity. Now, that's that's what I read, but then that's only on paper. But let's let's suppose government takes this to court, and just remember now, every member who goes into Parliament do swear that they will be faithful to pay a true allegiance to His Majesty, you know, and heirs. Now, if Hayward, and I'm looking at his background. I see where his father is heir to King Charles. So we are now swearing allegiance to the people we are taking to court. If it happens to do so, that you would be faithful. I mean, you know, look what you're saying every time you swear yourself in, buffoon. But then you also have, let's suppose it goes to the Privy Council. Right? Yes, sir. Um, they are possibly heirs. And I ain't going to rule against my boy. Right. But they, First they, but, of all, that's right, my but cousin. They, they, <laughs> right, but they will rule. They will rule Thank you very the much constitution well. and the and the validity of the law. Other than that, their credibility will go, uh, will 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 go will go in uh, will become in question. But understand this now: their connection to the British thing is on both sides of those families because Lady Henry Ethel's father, uh, mother, was uh, late. I think what they call them, lady in waiting, or something for the Queen. And so that's where their titles come from. Okay. Uh, C. Allen. Yes. Should Freeport be its own constituency? Will it, that it is. It, no, but I, no, we don't want to use the word constituency. We want to stick with what Dwight has been arguing for. And I have, I've been arguing similarly for Local government market, district. For it to become a, municipal, a municipality in its own sense. See, the problem with that is exactly how we end up at local government for the rest of the Bahamas, where that facade is like what I rule I had for my daughters. They can wear whatever they want as long as I bought it, drink whatever they want as long as I bought it. They can stay as late as they want, just be home by six. See, it just gives you a sense of this. And if we don't have local government in the Bahamas, I wish we would stop saying we do. Municipal government would give us our own ability to govern ourselves and even to self-tax ourselves and to give taxes, et cetera, to people and incentives that we want for people to come in any particular in, in the particular area. But the problem is that but the Hawksville Greek, Greek Agreement also says that no law should apply to Bohemians, not foreigners, to Bohemians in Freeport that doesn't apply to Bohemians everywhere. So when you give Freeport what it's called for, municipal government, you must also give municipal government to the entire Bahamas. And that is one of the things that the that I can't think why they didn't give it to us in 1993. And it's the same thing, a land registry must be established. And when you establish it for Freeport, you have to establish for the entire Bahamas. And so what this is what I'm saying for Bahamas, many of the things that they've asked for from the set from this tense of evolutions of governance is in part of the Hawksbury Creek Agreement that has just not been properly implemented. And for some reason, remember what Renwood Wells says? If I give you all local government or municipal government, what would MPs do? LOI don't believe Renwood, Renwood Wells at all. <laughs> Quick question. No, they would just go to New Providence. Remember how the U.S. government does? You have, you have, you have governors running states or whatever, mm -hmm. mayors and things. They just go to New Providence and pass legislation, 
policies, procedures, programs, projects, and processes. Quick question, That's because we're we running out of time. Industries. I want to make sure I get this in. Um, does the Grand Bahama Thor- Port Authority have a duty of care for the rest of Grand Bahama or just Freeport? And they have a duty of care based on the agreement, such as providing water, electricity, the heart of Freeport. Uh, I mean, the, that, in, in, considering they have 230 square miles, whether implied or direct, they do have that responsibility. That's why Grand Bahama itself has remained stagnant. I know we talk about East and West Grand Bahama, but there's really no true access because the hub of commerce, the heart of commerce is in Freeport. And the other East and West, the, West, the East is considered undeveloped. And um, the, the, the popular center called West Grand Bahama is considered where the, the, what do you call the suburbs or where the housing and everything else is with small touches of commerce. But Freeport itself was responsible for the development and, and maintaining um, the island. And that's why, the in, and in fact, when you look at the, what it's supposed to do for the entire Bahamas, it's supposed to develop Freeport for the benefit of the Bahamas, not for the benefit of Freeport or for themselves exclusively. So some quick... And that's why when, when, let me just quickly say, you asked about exclusive economic yeah. zones. You can have as many exclusive economic zones you want across the Bahamas. Now, and in fact, it, it too small. The Bahamas, too small. Bahama. No, the no, Bahamas too Grand small. No, the Bahamas too small. East Bahama, East Grand Bahama, Mayor Guana, but you could have small economic zones that could have powerful impact. You know, a small economic zone could be as simple as a couple of data centers that could add billions to the government, to the GDP of the Bahamas. And so there's no size and small. That what it is is small in thinking. But the problem is that our, we have leadership that is cemented in the past and denies of the future. Now, see, Alan, when you say that, I assume somebody can say to me that I'm responsible for this problem. Because at the end, every problem that arises, some politician can say it's the Bahamian people who either have to bear the brunt, right, of the solution, or that we are the problem, right? What's going on in Grand Bahama in terms of educating people about the Hawks Bill curricula? When I was in school, are they teaching about it? Can UB mm-hmm. North become a center of learning about uh, the Hawksville Creek Agreement? Should this be a, a class, a chapter, a unit at uh, UB, UE Law School, at University of the Bahamas? Be, it should, no, it is very important that it should be, but I think every aspect of the Hawksville Creek Agreement should be broken down into layman's term. Uh, and, and you could start with the Royal Commission report, but it should be converted even to layman's terms and how any modification of ECGs have happened, whether written or unwritten, in practice and for discussion. Because even the licensees themselves don't know the power they possess as part of this agreement. And so because we've just been existing for the last 40 years since the Ben O'Brake speech, and we came in possession without education of the utilization of it. Uh-huh. Very few people can remember. Imagine being the, one of the first exclusive economic zone in the world. And now you look at Singapore and China yeah. and all these other places that we say is the future. Those are economic zones. Why we, we have not had that ability? Absolutely. We see, see Alan, we have as we end, let me them. share some of the resources that you shared with us for this conversation. For people who are interested in learning more, go to YouTube and search GB Attorney Kirk Antoni's Forceful Remarks at the Hawksbill Creek Agreement meeting, Honorable Gregory K. Moss contribution to the Grand Bahama Port Authority d- debate, Honorable Gregory K. Moss contribution extension of tax exemptions, Global Paradigm Shift, Maurice Glinton KC discussion, and Maurice O. Glinton Esquire, the Hawksbill Creek Agreement current something. All on YouTube. Let me add one, let me add one thing to that. C. Allen, A L L E N. Johnson at Outlook. I will send you a copy of the Royal Commission Report or even WhatsApp me at 825-9700. The primer as to what was intended, not necessarily what it is. Okay. okay. I'd just like to thank you, C. Allen Jones, for being our guest for the day. Thank you very much, Aaron Green. This has been Garden Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. Have a wonderful day. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.